Hello. Um, this is a step-by-step um, -step execution of the factorial function in assembly. Um, so what I'm doing here is um, I'm going to follow the execution of factorial when it is given the number 3. And factorial of 3 is 3 times 2 times 1, which is 6. And we're going to see how the code um, generates this result. So um, in red, I have comments uh, in assembly. And I like to use Python um, as a way of documenting assembly code. So in my main Python code, I'm setting it n to 3. And then I'm printing um, some string that shows factorial of 3 equals. And then I'm going to call the function fact of n. And n is 3. So my main program, I've simplified it quite a bit just to keep the important part. So the first thing that will happen is that I'm going to uh, push n, which is uh, 3, and then call fact. And then when I come back from the call, I will print it. So I have two library functions. It's not terribly important to know how they work, but I'm going to print whatever is in EAX. I'm assuming that the factorial function will return the results in EAX, the register e EAX. So this is this is using 32-bit uh, assembly on uh, Linux. And then I'm going to print um, uh, a new line right after that. So that's the main program. The function, let's take a quick look at the factorial function right away. The first two things I'm going to do is to push EBP and move uh, ESP into EBP. That creates the stack frame. So now I have a reference to the stack. Um, it's going to use the EDX register. So I'm pushing it here. And I'm going to pop it at the end, pop EBP, and return 4. 4 because I'm pushing a double word of 4 bytes in the stack. So I'm returning and getting rid of four bytes in the stack. Um, so here again is the, um, the documentation for the factorial function. If n is equal to 1, I should return 1. So let's verify that this happens. Compare the word ebp plus 8. We're going to see that the parameter n is at ebp plus 8 in the stack. Compare it to 1. If it's greater than 1, I'm going to recurse. The function is going to call itself. Otherwise, I have to return 1. And since the return value is in EAX, I move 1 in EAX, and I go to the end, where I'm going to pop EDX, pop EBX, return 4. If um, n is, is greater than 1, I need to uh, recurse. So I'm going to call factorial on n minus 1, temporarily so save this into a variable called result. And um, then I'm returning n times result. So that's what this code. So let's verify that uh, this is indeed the case. So again, comparing n in the stack, which is a TBP plus a to 1. If it's greater than 1, I go to recurse. And what I need to do there is call factorial of n minus 1. So I'm grabbing n at TBP plus 8, put it in the AX, decrement it. So now I have n minus 1. I'm pushing it um, because that's my template, pushing the parameter calling the function. If you look at the main program, that's how I need to call the function. So the main program is always good to give you a template of how to call a particular function. So um, I'm pushing EAX, which contains n minus 1, calling the function. When I'm returning from the function, assuming that it's written correctly, I will have the factorial of n minus 1 in EAX. And I can multiply EAX by whatever is at EBP plus 8, which is n. So I'm going to multiply n times factorial of n minus 1. That's now in EAX and EDX. I pop EDX, um, pop EBP, return 4. And that will be the result. All right, so let's single step this. So in blue, the blue box is going to show um, the, the, the instruction that is about to be executed. And then I'm going to click and, and, and move on. And we'll see how the, um, the EX register and the stack. This is my stack, by the way. ESP is pointing at the top here. And you see that I've put some addresses just so that we have a reference. And I'm assuming that my stack is a stack of double words. So all the addresses are multiples of 4. Right, so f0 to f4. This block here contains four bytes that are at address f0, f1, f2, and f3. So that's the notation. All right, so I've just pushed n, which contains 3. So now 3 is at the top of my stack. The ESP is pointing here. And I've called fact, and now I'm, I'm right here, and I'm about to execute push EBP. So I have the return address of where we need to go when we're done with the recursion, which is the return address of print in. So I have to return here. So whatever address um, is, whatever address that call instruction is at, that's what I have here. So now I'm going to push EBP. So the old EBP is now there, and I'm going to make 
uh, EBP point to wherever ESP is pointing. So now EBP is pointing here, the same as ESP. Okay, so now um, all DDX is in the stack. I'm going to compare what is at EBP plus 8. So I've mentioned earlier that my parameter n will be at EBP plus 8 for a given function. So if you look, EBP is pointing here, plus 4, plus 8. So what I'm going to compare is 3. I'm going to compare it to 1 right here. And we know that 3 is greater, so I'm going to go to the recursive uh, part of the function. Move into EAX EBP plus 8. So now EAX contains 3. I've moved this 3 into EAX. I'm about to decrement EAX. That's it. EAX is decremented. Now it contains 2. And I'm going to call the function and ask the function to compute the factorial of 2. So push EAX to get in the stack. Call fact. So the return address of the multiply instruction that follows this call is now pushed in the stack. So when I'm going to return at that particular point, I'll return to the multiplication. But in the meantime, I'm back at the top because I'm calling fact. The function is calling itself. It's a recursion. Push EBP. So now I know what EBP was. It was pointing to F8. So the old EBP F8 is now pushed in the stack. ESP is coming down. And I'm going to make EBP point to where ESP is pointing. So now this second level recursive fact has a new stack frame. And EBP now points to it. I've pushed EDX. Compare EBP plus 8 to 1. EBP plus 8 is the number 2. It's definitely not 1. And I'm going to recurse. Um, moving to EAX EBP plus 8. That gives me 2. Decrement it. EAX is now 1. Push this and call fact because I want to compute, compute the factorial of 1. And Again, I'm going to call fact. So the return address that will be in the stack will be the return address of this multiply instruction. So I'm at push EBP. The return address of mole is here. ESP is coming down. So you see my stack is growing down. Um, push EBP. The old EBP, which was E8, is now in um, the, the stack. And I make EBP point to that particular place. Push EDX. Compare um, devoid EBP plus 8. I'm going to compare this to 1, and now it is equal to 1. So that's the end of the recursion. Jump if greater to recurse. No, it's not greater. So move into EAX1. OK, so now EAX contains 1. Jump to end fact. So I'm going to jump there. And now I can, if you see what the instructions are here, I need to pop EDX, I need to pop EBP, return 4. And that's exactly the state of my stack. I have EDX, I have the EBP, I have the return address, and I'm going to get rid of 4 bytes that are right here. So pop EDX, pop EBP, and return 4. And now ESP points here. And I cannot rely on anything below ESP. That's because the processor is interrupted constantly. So the, 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 the part of the stack that is below ESP is constantly overwritten by interrupts that push the state of the program in the stack. Um, so now I've returned to the multiply. So I can multiply whatever is in EAX, which is 1, um, with whatever is at EBP plus 8, which is 2, 2 times 1. So that gives me 2 in EAX. And um, remember that multiply um, um, is a, on 32-bit 30, 30 numbers results in a 64-bit um, product, product. So EDX is the top. We're going to assume always that EDX is 0. That's what compiled, program, compiled programs do. So uh, EDX is part of the multiplication, but is 0, which is why I was saving it, because I knew the multiplication was going to modify EDX. So now I can pop EDX return it to its old value, whatever it was. It's returned. Pop EBP. So now EBP returns back here. And I'm about to return and get rid of 4 bytes. So I'm going to return to the multiply instruction again and get rid of these two. So now ESP points here. I'm back at the multiply. And I'm going to multiply what is at EBP plus 8, which is 3 by 2. So multiply. That's 6. 3 times 2 is 6. EDX becomes 0. I'm done with the work. Everything is in EAX, which is where it should be. And this is why I've picked EAX to return the value. Pop EDX, pop EBP, return 4. But now I'm going to return to my return address for print int, which is here, and get rid of 4 bytes containing the 3. 
So now ESP is, I'm back in the main program and you see that ESP is pointing where it was pointing originally when I started the main program. So that's very good. I have to return the stack in the same uh, state that it was in before I started my recursive call. Um, and so now I can print it and it's gonna print uh, the result. All right, so this is um, something that I've been using in my uh, assembly language class in CSC 231 at Smith College. I hope you find it useful. Um, if you want to get more information and have um, more programs and examples, you should be able to find it at this URL.